Everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today I am bringing you the how to play tapestry solo video. So this is going to teach you how to use the Ultima and the Shadow Empire for the solo game of tapestry. This game is so much fun. It made my top eight, or I'm sorry, top nine favorite solo games from uh, my solo game list this year, 2019. So be sure to check that video out. There's a link here in the video for you to see that one if you haven't seen it yet. I, a lot of great games on that list. This is certainly one of them. I do also want to mention our sponsor, Board Game Co. Board Game Co. is a great website where you can go buy, sell, and trade games. All kinds of great stuff over there. I, the, the, just a, a really great tool for, for kind of tweaking your collection, especially the trade tool over there. I, I really like that, how they've got it set up. They've got a, a, a system for you know, letting you know the, the value of a certain game for the trade and you know so that way it makes it easy to determine well i'd trade this one game for these two games and, and see if that makes sense they can link right into your board game geek account and see what games you have that they want and vice versa it's a really cool tool be sure to check out board game co there's a link in the description below so they know that i sent you over there so please click on that and board game co is a great place to buy sell and trade your way into a better collection Okay, so let's get down to the table. I'm gonna show you how to play Tapestry solo. In this video, we'll be teaching you how to add two AI players to Tapestry, the Ultima and the Shadow Empire. These two artificial players may be used together to play a solo game, or the player can use just the Shadow Empire with two human players. For this video, we'll be discussing how to use the Ultima and the Shadow Empire for solo play. Both of the AIs play by their own simplified rules. However, it's important to keep in mind that any multiplayer rules not specifically overridden are still in effect. To begin setting up for solo play, certain civilizations and tapestries must be removed from the game so as to not be used during play. Traders must be removed. Futurist, heralds, and inventors are recommended to be removed as they may provide an unfair benefit or difficulty to the player. Also, the Tapestry Cards, Alliance, Dictatorship, Marriage of State, Oil Magnet, and Olympic Host, along with two traps, must be removed. And it's recommended that Age of Sail, Coal Baron, Diplomacy, Espionage, Steam Tycoon, and Trade Economy are removed as well. Next, begin setting up as you would for a three-player game, except that the player will always begin on the territory labeled 2-4. This is regardless of which capital city the player is using. The rest of the setup for the player is done as normal. After setting themselves up, the player then follows the following steps for setting up the bots. Choose a color for the Ultima. You can see I've chosen blue. After choosing the Ultima's color, give it the following components and nothing else. It gets all the outposts of its color, two of which are placed on a 3-5 territory. The Ultima income mat with the normal side up. All player tokens of its color, one of which is placed on a zero victory point space. One is also placed on each of the starting spaces of the advancement tracks. Next, roll the science die and whichever symbol is face up, place that civilization card on the Ultima mat like that. Then place one of the Ultima's outposts next to the track belonging to that civilization card. This will be the Ultima's favorite track. Now choose a color for the Shadow Empire, let's say gray. The Shadow Empire will then receive the following components. Five player tokens, four of which are placed on each of the advancement track starting spaces. All outposts of its color. And then roll the science die to select the Shadow Empire's favorite track. If the rolled symbol is the same as the Ultima's favorite track, then roll again. Continue rolling until a different symbol is rolled and then place one outpost next to that track. Find the Ultima decision cards labeled 8 through 22 and shuffle them to form a face down progress deck. Then shuffle the seven remaining Ultima decision cards labeled 1 through 7 
And the topmost card from the advancement deck to form a face down decision deck. The Shadow Empire increases the competition for any landmarks and the competition for any advancement track achievements. It follows a small subset of the Ultima's rules and it acts as a neighbor and opponent for both you and the Ultima. However, if it claims any outpost, that outpost is instead placed on the Ultima's income mat. It's important to keep in mind that the bots will only ever gain what's explicitly mentioned in the Ultima rulebook. For example, they will never gain income buildings or resources, and the Shadow Empire will never gain victory points. So let's take a closer look at exactly what players will find on the Ultima cards. This box right here holds the tiebreakers when deciding what track the bot will focus on. This is the hex tiebreaker, which will assist when exploring and conquering. This is the toppled outpost indicator which can affect where a bot will conquer. These are the Ultima and Shadow Empire track indicators. This is the income indicator which is empty here, but sometimes we'll have the income icon here. And this is the card type and ID which has no gameplay functionality. Decision cards are placed in pairs like this to determine what bots do. The left card in the pair is called the track card, while the right card is called the tiebreaker card. Only the middle two columns are active and used during an Ultima's turn. The Ultima and the Shadow Empire will take their turn together either before or after the player. If the player needs to draw a decision card and the decision deck is empty, that is when the bots will take an income turn instead. Otherwise, the bots follow this procedure. First, discard the decision card pair from the bot's last turn. Next, draw the top two cards from the decision deck and place them face up randomly as a decision card pair. If the decision deck is now empty and the track card has an income, if the decision deck were empty at this point, like this, and there were an income icon here, like there was on this card, then the bots would take their income turn now, one turn early. This would cause the player to skip the last step of this procedure. However, since the deck is not empty, the player will instead advance on a track for the Ultima and then advance on a track for the Shadow Empire. The player may look through this discard pile at any time, by the way. The blue track indicator and the blue arrow are for the Ultima, while the gray track indicator and the gray arrow are for the Shadow Empire. Also, all of the Shadow Empire icons will have this S on them. So now let's talk about what each track symbol actually means. This empty box symbol means any track where the bot has not yet reached the end is considered valid. This symbol means the track where the bot has the shortest distance to the end of the track or an unclaimed landmark. Ignore any track for this symbol where the bot has already reached the end. This symbol means the track where the bot has the shortest distance to the end of the track. Once again, you'll ignore any tracks where the bot has reached the end. If more than one track is valid, then the bot advances on the track that's first in the tiebreaker section here. This symbol means the bot's favorite track. So let's say the Ultima had two different tracks that were valid, technology and military. Well, if that was the case, then the bot would go down this track and see, oh, technology comes before military for the Ultima, so the Ultima will advance on the technology track. The one exception would be if the military track happened to be the bot's favorite track. You can see here the favorite comes first for the Ultima, and so it would advance on the military track instead. When advancing to a new space, the Ultima only gains benefits from icons that are listed in this chart. All other benefits are ignored. Now this next rule is very, very important and is possibly one of the most overlooked rules, particularly by me. If a benefit is granted multiple times on a space, the Ultima only ever gains it once. So for instance, if the Ultima makes it all the way down here to Alien Biology, it's only going to roll that science die one time. Also remember that the Shadow Empire never gains benefits and neither bot will ever gain bonuses. So let's run through the benefits the Ultima will gain. Research is resolved just like it is for the player, where the Ultima will roll and advance on the indicated track with the science die. 
This can happen either with or without the benefit, as you see here, without the X and with the X. If the Ultima Gains invent, these three face-up technology cards will be discarded and replaced with three new ones. We'll discuss how the Ultima uses Conquer and Explore shortly. These symbols require the player to roll the science die until one of the indicated tracks is selected, then carry out the indicated advancement or regression as normal. This symbol means the Ultima will gain a tapestry card which will be placed face down next to its mat. Finally, while landmarks are not strictly speaking benefits, now is a good time to reiterate that if either bot claims a landmark, it will be placed on the Ultima's income mat. All procedures for placing tiles and outposts on the board use the hex tiebreaker to choose one hex among a set of valid hexes. Using the hex tiebreaker icon on the tiebreaker card, start with the hex that has the black arrow right here, and then move along the hexes in the direction indicated, so like this. If none of those hexes were valid hexes for whatever is happening right now, Go to the next hex indicated by the gray arrow here and move down that way. If none of those hexes were valid either, then move along in the same direction you've been moving and keep going until you find a valid hex. Anytime you're determining distance looking for the closest hex to a specific hex, you will determine closest by the hex that has the fewest hexes away via the shortest path of hexes with zero Ultima Outpost and zero to one of the player's tokens. That basically is a long, sort of complicated way of saying that you're looking for the path that the Ultima could do a series of conquer actions along. So for instance, if for some reason you were trying to find the shortest distance from this hex to this hex for the Ultima, it would be one, two, three, four, it would not go through this hex since there's already an Ultima outpost here. Okay, now let's talk about the way the Ultima conquers. The Ultima will follow one of two possible procedures when conquering. If the Ultima can legally conquer a territory the player controls, then it carries out the conquer opponent procedure. Otherwise, it will carry out the conquer neutral procedure. When the Ultima attempts to conquer the player, the valid territories are all territories the player controls, which the Ultima can legally conquer. In this case, just this territory. If the Ultima has multiple valid territories, then first it looks to see if the Middle Island achievement can still be gained, and if so, the valid territories closest to the Middle Island, seen here, would be the only valid options. So for instance, in this case, both of these are valid options for conquering. However, this territory is closest to Middle Island, and therefore that is the valid territory the Ultima will conquer. Remember, if after doing those tiebreakers there are still multiple valid territories, use the hex tiebreaker on the Ultima card. Once the valid territory is determined, the Ultima places an outpost from its supply on the player's hex and topples the player's outpost. If the player has a trap, they are allowed to play one now in order to prevent this conquering. When using the conquer neutral procedure, the Ultima's valid hexes are all hexes that can be conquered legally by the Ultima. In this case, any of these six hexes around the starting position. Hexes adjacent to territories controlled by the player are only ever valid if this toppled outpost icon is present on the tiebreaker card. If somehow there are no valid hexes at all, which should be pretty rare, then skip this action. If the Ultima has multiple valid hexes available, then first it checks to see if the Middle Island achievement is still obtainable. If so, only the valid hexes closest to the Middle Island remain valid. So in this case, this would be the only valid hex. But when using the Middle Island tiebreaker, sometimes you may have multiple still valid tiles. In this case, there are two valid tiles. So, if the player controls any territories that have a single token on them, then only the valid hexes closest to that territory remain valid. In this case, this would now be the only valid territory left. 
If the player does not control a territory with a single token on it, then only the valid hexes closest to the player's territory that they do control remain valid. So in this case, again, this would be the valid hex. If there are still multiple valid hexes, use the hex tiebreaker. Once the valid hex is determined, if it has no territory tile already on it, then one is drawn and placed face up in a random orientation. However, if that hex did already have a territory on it, then ignore that step. Next, the Ultima will place an outpost from a supply on the territory. If the toppled outpost icon is present on the tiebreaker card and the conquered terrain isn't the middle island, then place one of the Shadow Empire's outposts toppled on the conquered territory. Now let's discuss how the Ultima explores. First, it determines the valid hexes. Valid hexes are going to be all hexes the Ultima can legally explore. As you can see once again, there are six valid hexes from the starting position. If somehow there were no valid hexes, then this action would be skipped, just like the Conquer action was in that rare case. If there are multiple valid hexes as we see here and the Ultima does not have military selected as its favorite track, then only the valid hexes furthest from territories the player controls remain valid. If there are still multiple valid hexes, then use the hex tiebreaker. Once the hex is selected, then draw a territory tile, randomly orient it, and place it. If the player conquers a territory controlled by the Ultima and it has any tapestry cards next to its mat, first discard one of its tapestry cards at random. If that card was a trap, the Ultima retains control of the territory and the player's outpost enters play toppled. As you can see, that was not a trap, and so the player repeats these two steps until the Ultima either discards a trap or runs out of tapestry cards. In this case, the Ultima ran out of tapestry cards, and so the player has successfully conquered the Ultima. The Ultima earns achievements and the victory points from them the same way the player does. It's important to note, however, that the Shadow Empire outposts do not count towards the topple to opponent outpost achievement. Also, the Shadow Empire can only earn the complete any advancement track achievement. This is only for blocking purposes and no victory points will be awarded when the Shadow Empire gains that achievement. During an income turn, the Ultima gains what's listed on the income chart on its mat from top to bottom, left to right. If the Ultima takes an action during the income turn that requires tiebreaking, Use the latest tiebreaker card in income turns two through five. If this somehow occurs in turn one, draw the top card of the progress deck for this purpose and then reshuffle afterwards. Now let's take a quick look at the symbols the players will encounter during the bot's income turn. These heart symbols indicate that if a bot's token has reached the end of its favorite track or if there is another token more advanced on its favorite track, then it must change its favorite track, or at least attempt to. The bot's favorite track will be the one that is indicated by this symbol. In other words, the track where the bot is the closest to gaining a landmark or closest to reaching the end of the track. This does mean that it's possible the bot will remain on the track it's already on. It's also possible the bot will move to a different track that already has the other bot on it. This symbol indicates the player should advance the track tokens of both bots using the most recent decision pair cards. The Ultimas will gain the benefits, if any, as normal. This also means that the Ultima will do an advance and income in the same turn. And finally, the most recent card pair will sometimes be used twice because of this ability. This symbol means the Ultima will gain its income turn bonus, if any, from its Civilization card. This symbol gives the Ultima victory points for each landmark on its mat and for each controlled territory. That symbol also means the Ultima gains victory points for each space it has advanced on each of the indicated advancement tracks. For each of the indicated victory point symbols, be sure to multiply it by the appropriate number. Income turn number two will be these numbers for multiplying purposes. However, income turn number three will be these. This symbol means to add the two topmost cards from the progress deck to the decision deck discard pile. 
Here, the player will place a tapestry card face down on the leftmost empty tapestry space, as you saw me do just a moment ago, on the Ultima's income mat. It's important to remember that this tapestry card will come from the top of the tapestry deck. This symbol indicates the player should draw one tapestry card and place it next to the Ultima's income mat. These are the cards that will be used if the player attempts to conquer the Ultima. And finally, shuffle all the decision cards from the most recent era to form a new face down decision deck. If the Ultima is the first to start a new era, it will gain the indicated victory points for that era. It's important to realize that the Ultima will almost exclusively gain victory points during income turns. When the game reaches its end, determine the winner following the instructions in the normal rulebook. Remember, the Shadow Empire doesn't participate in this. This contest is strictly between the player and the Ultima. If the player does wish to adjust the Ultima difficulty level, they can find quick and easy instructions for that on the back of the Solo Play rulebook. So there you go, that's everything you need to know to play Tapestry Solo. Be sure to check out my other Tapestry videos. I've got a gameplay, I've got the original how to play, and an unboxing, all kinds of good stuff. And not just for Tapestry, of course, for lots of other games. Please support us over on, ta on ta Tatreon? Please support us on Patreon. Uh, if you uh, like our videos at all and you think that they might be worth a little bit of support, there's other ways you can support the channel as well in the description below. And until next time, if you're bored online, bored offline.